Hi guys, Dane here, and welcome to whatever instalment of my bookshelf tour this is. I have three more of these left to do, and then we're all finished. So, let's go ahead and get started. So, we're up to T. So, we will start with these. So, here we have Mind the Gaff by R.L. Trask, The Penguin Guide to Common Errors in English. And this is basically common grammatical and spelling mistakes and that kind of thing. I did actually read it through from cover to cover, but it's more of a reference book slash dictionary. It's all right for what it is. You might want it if you're a writer, but otherwise, you know, take it or leave it. Then we have some Dave Trot, and Dave Trot's incredible. So here we have one plus one equals three, a masterclass in creative thinking. And here we have a predatory thinking as well. So basically he has this very distinct writing style where he writes in short sentences. So I'm going to read you one of his little stories and uh, you'll kind of see how he gets some wisdom from it. Okay, so this is the first one in this one in one plus one equals three. In 1988, Nicholas Winton's wife was going through their attic. She came across a scrapbook. In it were hundreds and hundreds of names and addresses. She'd never seen them before. She asked her husband what they were. Then he told her this story. In 1938, Nicholas Winton was going skiing in Switzerland when Kristallnacht happened. In a night of violence, mass attacks were organized against Jews all over Germany. Jewish homes, hospitals, and schools were looted and burned. Over 1,000 synagogues and 7,000 businesses were destroyed. Nearly 100 people were murdered and 30,000 were arrested and sent to concentration camps. It was the start of the Nazis' campaign to systematically destroy the Jewish race. Nicholas Winton had friends in Prague. He cancelled his skiing trip and went there instead. It was obvious Germany would invade Czechoslovakia next, and every Jewish person there would be dis exterminated. Families were desperate to save their children. The British government had agreed to allow unrestricted immigration of refugee Jewish children. All they needed was £50 each and a place to stay. Nicholas Winton decided to take action. He set up an office in the dining room of his hotel in Prague, made lists of hundreds of children he would help escape the Nazis. Then he travelled back to Britain to arrange the money in the homes. He arranged for 669 children to escape to Britain, children who wouldn't otherwise have survived. We know this because after the children left, their parents perished in the concentration camps. Nicholas Winton never mentioned it to anyone because he felt frustrated that he hadn't done more. Later, in 1988, he was in the audience at the recording of a TV programme. Suddenly, the host began talking about Nicholas Winton. She introduced the lady next to him. The lady, now in her 50s, was one of the children he had saved. The lady said thank you over and over again. She kissed his hand and held it to her cheek. And he had to wipe his eye as the good he had done became real to him in human terms. Then the host asked if there was anyone else in the audience who owed, who owed their life to Nicholas Winton. And the entire audience stood up. People who had families of their own, wives, husbands, children, grandchildren. And Nicholas Winton didn't quite know what was happening. First he looked to one side, then the other, and then behind him. Then he stood up and looked all around him. And he couldn't believe it. The entire audience, every single person in the TV studio, was standing up, smiling and thanking him. Physicists, surgeons, authors, artists, politicians, journalists, architects, filmmakers, lawyers, businessmen, teachers. He'd saved the life of every single person in the theatre. And Nicholas Winton finally got it. Forget what you haven't done. It's what you have done that matters. So yeah. I don't know, they're all just insightful and they're pretty cool for like, they make you think in new ways, you know? These little sort of vignettes. Here we have Lintrus, so we have Eat, Shoots and Leaves, the Zero Tolerance Approach to Punctuation. This is the one that she's most well known for. It's got like non-fiction about punctuation and grammar and that kind of thing. Nice if you're a grammar Nazi. Here we have Lynn Truss, Making the Cat Laugh, one woman's journal of single life on the margins. It's basically about her living with her cats and it was quite humorous and quite well written. And then we have Talk to the Hand, which was incredibly disappointing. It was basically just her ranting about things that she didn't like, such as people who have visible tattoos, which to me doesn't seem to have any, like it has nothing to do with it. She's just finding stuff to rant about for no reason. But hey-ho. So that's kind of my, the most recent one of hers that I've read. And it left a sour taste in my mouth. So I don't know if I even want to keep reading her stuff. But we'll see. Here we have The Chalk Man by CJ Tudor. I was expecting this to be kind of a horror. But it was more like a general domestic thriller almost. You know, where there's been a dark past and all this stuff. Lots of jumping through time, which I wasn't particularly on board with. It was alright, but I didn't love it. And wouldn't particularly recommend it. Here we have Mark Turner, When the Heavens Fall. This is basically book one in like this epic fantasy series. It was actually very good, and I particularly remember from reading this that I thought the uh, action scenes and the battles and stuff were well done. 
But there's just so much epic fantasy out there that there's there's other stuff I need to get to first, you know? And I mean, it is. It's like small print and stuff. It took me a fair old while to get through it. So, uh, yeah, it was it was good. But I don't know if I could recommend it above other stuff, you know? Here we have Mark Twain, The Prince and the Pauper. Kind of classic story, really, about a prince and a poor kid switching places and then getting stuck in each other's places and whatnot. Mark Twain's highly entertaining tale of mistaken identity. Two boys, Tom Canty and Edward Tudor, leave, lead very different lives. One is a prince and heir to the throne, while the other lives in poverty. But they look identical, and so one day... And yeah, enjoyed it. It was good, actually. Children's classic. Although, I think I enjoyed it reading more as an adult than I would have if I'd read it as a child. And then here we have Sun Tzu, The Art of War. This is uh, translated by Yuan Shibing, the modern Chinese interpretation. Uh, kind of a very well-known classic, really. Kind of military advice that you can also apply to day-to-day -day life. So you have a lot of people swear and they'll use it in the boardroom and stuff like that in the workplace. Let me move on to you. So here we have Uninspirational Tinder Nightmares. And um, these are basically just screenshots from Tinder. Hey, are you an archaeologist by any chance? Lol, no. Shame, because I have a large bone that needs examining. Yeah. And here we have Neil Usher, The Elemental Workplace. So this is another one of the non-fiction books that I did, like a Sparknote style, ten, uh, 2,000 word summary for, for one of my clients. It was all right. Uh, it, yeah. You kind of... I, I, can't ex I can't give you a top line overview without explaining what this elemental model is, and that'll take too much time. So that brings us on to the Vs. So here we have Path of the Gods by James Valrose. This is uh, another sort of fantasy, yeah. Story of coming of age, magic and mystery, battle and betrayal, romance and revenge. First in uh, like a series, The Theurgy Revolution. And I picked this up for a very weird reason. It was because I saw the author appeared on Come Dine With Me. And they mentioned he was an author, so I was like, right, I'll buy his book. And it was all right for what it was, you know? Here we have The Thinking Effect by Michael Vaughan. Rethinking thinking to create great leaders and the new value worker. Honestly don't remember this. This is published by Nicholas Breeley. Uh, they're like a non-fiction business book publishing house. They used to send me quite a lot of their new releases. And this was just, you know, one of many. That brings us on to Gary Vaynerchuk. So uh, we have here Ask Gary V. One entrepreneur's take on leadership, social media and self-awareness. Gary basically has this uh, YouTube channel where he had a show on it called Ask Gary V. I don't know if he still has it. But people used to send in their questions and he'd answer them. And this is almost like a set of transcriptions, but it does build on them in some places. So there is some additional value to reading the book. And I actually got that at the launch night for it in London. It was one of those where I got my work to get me tickets to the launch event. He did a, a Q&A while there. And then uh, you got a signed book and stuff. Or was it a signed book or unsigned, I think? Here is Crush It uh, by Gary Vaynerchuk. Cash in on your passion. This is like his first book uh, that kind of made his name, I guess. Here is a jab, 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 right hook. How to tell your story in a noisy social world. I went to the uh, launch for this as well. And this basically gives you a lot of advice for different sort of social networking platforms, like storytelling on Facebook, the characteristics of great content and compelling stories. So it's all sort of social media marketing stuff. And then here we have the thank you economy, um, which was another very in in uh, influential book as well. If you're interested in learning more about Gary Vaynerchuk, I would suggest checking out his uh, YouTube channel because he's very much, you know, he has, like, I think, over a million subscribers and he's very much a well-known thought leader. So I think if you check out some of his videos, you'll get a feel for his personality because his personality comes through in the books. Here we have Pulse by Vino Venitas and Antidote. So Vino has a YouTube channel where he shares poems and this is basically poetry and then accompanying artwork as well. I'm going to read you a short one. I'll read you this one here. This is an uh, intro to chapter five moving on. As coy dream of donning dragon scales, I dream of morphing into myself. I stand ready to sail into stories that charts are yet to show, so my grave will be engraved with words I've come to know. Each honest heartbeat hums the honour of my mission. I'll map out my Atlantis, so break the anchor's bones and hear the motors moan. No time for tears or fears, this seafarer steers out to sea. And yeah, uh, check out Vino's channel. He, he's not been super active recently either, but he does a lot of really great poetry videos and does a lot of stuff that like relates to the, you know, the zeitgeist of what's happening at the moment. Here we have Jules Verne, Around the World in 80 Days. 
Cracking story about Phileas Fogg who makes a bet that he can go around the world in 80 days. Again, classic. Uh, I, I don't know whether you'd call it a classic or a children's classic, but I think I certainly would have enjoyed this as a kid a lot more than um, The Prince and the Pauper. But yeah, I would recommend for sure. And I, at some point, I want to get to Verne's entire collection. Here we have The Soul Thief by Majanka Verstraet. Uh, this is from the Angel of Death series, kind of YA paranormal, I guess you'd call it. Uh, she used to be published, oh it is here on the back, Young Adult slash Paranormal. <laughs> uh, she was published by Book Troop, who published my first book, and she was younger than me. So I was like, oh that's cool. So that's literally why I bought it, because she was you know, a reasonably su successful author who was younger than me. Only by a year, but still. And uh, I think she's Belgian as well. Nice, nice woman. Here we have by Bruno Vincent, some of the famous Five for Adults books. So we have Five on Brexit Island, Five Give Up the Booze, Five Go Gluten Free, Five Go on a Strategy Away Day, and Five Go Parenting. So this basically takes Ina Blyton's famous five characters and then kind of creates a story for adults or that's supposed to be relatable for adults. And uh, yeah, they're just humorous. They're parodies, you know, but they're good at what they do. Here we have The Widow's Game by Maddie Holiday Von Stark. Uh, I actually basically edited this, and I don't think I, I was credited in the end. No, it was edited by Larry Wiener, and then I had to go through and edit it again, basically, to make it all consistent. But yeah, uh, pretty cool, sort of... I don't know, well, Maddie Von Stark is kind of one of the... She's like a, almost a persona, but she lives that persona, if that makes sense. And then in this novel, we get all this stuff with the FBI and stuff, which I'm sure didn't happen because there's lots of paranormal stuff going on. But it's presented as though it did and as though it's a true account. It's a very strange book, but definitely worth picking up if you want to support women in horror. And then finally, we have Bluebird and God Bless You, Mr. Rosewater by Kurt Vonnegut. These are the only two Vonnegut books that I've read so far. They were both given to me by a friend. And I did enjoy them both, but obviously I need to get to like Slaughterhouse-Five and some more of his back catalogue. And there are plans to do that at some point. All right. Here we have The Youth 100 by Voxburner. This is their 2013 report of the UK's top brands according to 18 to 24s. I bet Apple was first. I bet it was Apple. Oh, number one, YouTube. Where's Apple then? They're not doing so well. They're, they're number 18th. So it goes YouTube, Amazon, Google, the BBC, Ben and Jerry's. Would not have called that. I reckon that's probably changed in the years since then. Here we have Building Facebook Applications for Dummies by Richard Wagner. Not the composer. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why I read this because I, I did actually have to build like one or two Facebook apps. But they were basically just... Do you remember back in the day when you had like custom tabs on Facebook? And because of where I worked, we didn't really have a web developer in-house. So I had to, with my limited knowledge of HTML, develop these like bespoke pages for these brands. But um, I don't know, good practice I guess. Here we have Ben Wakeling, When Dan Lived in the Woods. And this is an indie novel, basically about this guy who's just having a crappy time at work and decides, I'm just going to run away from it all and go and live in the woods. And then this kind of follows what happens. And this was really well done, actually. Probably like up there with my top indie novels, and I would definitely recommend this. Especially if you've ever felt the same, like you felt like, oh, I just want to leave everything behind. Here we have Arthur Whaley, Chinese Poems, uh, and these are all selected and translated by him. I just picked this up because it looked interesting. It's a 1949 edition, uh, volume pr produced for sale only to members of the Reader's Union. Uh, for example, Wedding Song here. My Lord is all aglow. In his left hand he holds the reed pipe. With his right he summons me to make free with him. Oh, the joy! My Lord is carefree. In his left hand he holds the dancing plumes. With his right he summons me to sport with him. Oh, the joy. Okay, here we have Alice Walker, The Colour Purple. Obviously a classic. It deals with uh, lesbianism and homosexuality. It deals with race and race religions. It deals with all kinds of things like abuse and alcoholism. Uh, set in the segregated world of the deep south between the wars. Celia has been raped by the man she calls father. Her two children are taken away from her. She has been forced into an ugly marriage. She has no one to talk to but God. And uh, yeah, just amazing novel, amazing. Really, it's one, one of those that definitely everyone should read. Here we have Vivian Ella Walden, Eating from the Cherry Tree. This is another book that's, I've read quite a few of these for some reason, memoirs by like madams or whatever. So it says here, Eating from the Cherry Tree is a dynamic, unique and totally revealing memoir of one of the most notorious and successful madams the UK has seen in recent years. 
Uh, the book is inspired by Vivian Ella Walden's unique life experiences that lead up to and behind her brothel doors. And here's a photo of her during her 65th birthday. I mean, she's just looking pretty good for 65, I would say. If I'm alive at 65, I'll be happy. Right, here we have a collection of Danny Wallace. Shout out to Cats and Camera, because I know she's a fan of his as well. Danny Wallace is like a British... I suppose he's part comedian, part journalist, part broadcaster. He also used to be the flatmate of Dave Gorman as well. He's one of my favourite comedians who's also written some books. So here is Awkward Situations for Men. Uh, this is all non-fiction, by the way. Danny Wallace in the Centre of the Universe. This is one of the quick reads. This is Friends Like These, in which he goes back and like meets up with all of his old best friends from when he was a kid. And they have like a reunion. Here we have Join Me which is uh, the true story of a man who started a cult by accident. So basically, he uh, he put an advert in a newspaper just saying, join me, and then his phone number and a load of people joined, and eventually he, he ended up with his own cult. Here we have more awkward situations for, for men. So this is basically, I think he wrote a column and uh, called Awkward Situations for Men, and that's what these books are. So it's like, how do you react when you realize that yesterday's underpants might still be in your trousers? What do you do if you think you might have a man crush? And what happens when you realise you may have accidentally ordered your wife a prostitute for her birthday? Alright, we have here Random Acts of Kindness. So these are 365 Ways to Make the World a Nicer Place by Danny Wallace and his Karma Army. Which I believe his Karma Army is like the evolution of his cult. But it's like, uh, buy a tub of coleslaw for a Portuguese man called Rui. Uh, that's what one of, his, one of his cult members did. Laugh at someone's story, even if it is quite frankly terrible. If someone stops you and asks you to take part in a survey, fight your instincts. Do the survey as best you can. Tell a customer service advisor you enjoyed their choice of holding music. So yeah, just quite, you know, a nice little laugh, but also a nice way to make the world a little bit better. Here we have Who is Tom Ditto, which is basically his first novel. I think I'll just read the blurb here. Tom got a note from his girlfriend. She says she hasn't left him, but that she's gone. But where the hell is she? When is she coming back? And what is Tom supposed to do in the meantime? With each new clue to Haley's whereabouts, Tom is forced to question whether he truly knows his girlfriend at all. Because who is Haley really anyway? Who is this other strange girl following him? And who, for that matter, is Tom Ditto? Oh, finally we have Yes Man, which is also turned into a movie starring Jim Carrey. Basically, he challenged himself just to say yes to everything he could to try and... He realised he wasn't, see, you know, grabbing life by the balls, basically. So he thought if he said yes to more things he might live a more interesting life, and this book kind of chronicles the results. So yeah, there we have it. That is the end of this bookshelf tour. I now have two more left to go, which I'll probably film tomorrow. So as always, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books, and if so, what you thought of them. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more, and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.